I tell you, I say, I tell you, this infiltration has got to stop. Do you realize they are northern spies? They are pouring from within. It's treachery, northern treachery. Get the blast on that character. He's the guy we need to make speeches for leads. Come on. Northern spies from Washington. Since when do we have to import our apples from foreign places? Ah, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Born and bred in the South. But Mr. Claghorn, I have to get my apples from someplace and they grow up north. Then something's got to be done about it. Well, speaking in general, our grant. Don't ever mention that name in my presence. Oh, that mean nothing. But what can we do, Mr. Claghorn? Eliminate the North. Make the whole country sound. That way we could call these apples Southern Spies. Hey, you. Claghorn's your name. Beauregard Claghorn, that is. Howdy. Now, son, in my plan, you simply move the Mason-Dixon line up around the Great Lakes. Make Canada and all. Mr. Claghorn. And after that, anyone who couldn't talk with a Southern draw would have to get a passport. But what about our maps, Mr. Claghorn? Maps? Did you ever look at the map? You notice how all the rivers flow south? Well, that's only because of the shape of the earth. Nonsense, son. It's because they can't stand it up north. Claghorn, you're wasting our time. And speaking of maps, you know, we got two states down here, South Carolina and North Carolina. North Carolina. No such place. Why don't they call it Upper South Carolina? But you can talk and about I that can't for the life of me understand why we got a South Dakota up north. There I go. Said that awful word again. But what's the difference, Mr. Claghorn? We all got the same American blood in us, whether we come from the North or the South. That's libel, son. I wouldn't have any Northern blood in me if I was dying and needed a transfusion. I don't know, Mr. Claghorn. My daughter married a Northern man. A Southern girl married to a Northerner. Why, George, their children will be half-breeds. <laughs> what? Hey, George, we haven't got all day. <laughs> That's a joke, son. Half-breeds. Southern girl married to and all that. <laughs> quiet. Quiet? Well, I haven't even begun to talk. That's just a whisper for me. If you really want to hear no, me, all right. No, no, save it, Clyghorn. We'll pay you to make noises like that. Pay me? Yeah. Well, gentlemen, what have I got to do? Plain or fancy oratory, radio talking, barbershop arguing, or hog calling? We want you to make speeches for Senator Alexander B. Leach. Leeds? Why, that poon doggling, pussy putting, carpet bagging, pusillanimous, pusillanimous, that is. From our Wait a minute. We'll pay you $25 a speech. I wouldn't care if you were going to pay me in Confederate money. Now, this Leeds, McGuire. And when you mention that man Leeds to me, a man who's done more to sully the fair name of the South than the bull weevil, you got a bull by the tail. And I'm flicking that tail in your face. We'll give you a It's my tail. Uh, talk, I mean to say. And I stand back of it. I defy you and the corruption you represent. Shut up. Shut up. I want to begin to talk. And there's no power on earth can silence me. Glory God! Glory God! <laughs> yes, my dear? Talk, talk, talk. That's all you do. Yes, dear. You know the daughters of Dixie are meeting at the house today, and we still have to help Mary Lou get things ready. Yes, dear. Well, come on. Daisy, don't you know that's a northern apple? You want to get this temple? Drop it. Come on. Yes, dear. Oh, Mary Abigail. No. <laughs> I had a hunch I could make you fall for me, but not that hard. What are you doing here? Just dropped in to see if you were still beautiful. Well, you better drop out and quit. You know how Mother feels about us. I know. She just got through telling me all about it. She told you? Yes. But she didn't know about it. You see, I hit on the back of the Surrey, only she didn't know about that either. Oh, the chances you take. Well, that's nothing to the chances I take for you. Listen, honey. I went over to the Arctic Packing Company again today to see that salesman Clancy. Please, don't talk work. Here, here, would you put this up here for me? Well, I thought you'd be interested. After all, my getting that frozen food truck is one of the most important things in both of our lives. Well, we won't have any lives if Mother catches you here. Well, you wait until I get that frozen food business started, and you watch how quick she'll change her tune. Wait is right. 
Well, that truck cost $2,700, you said, and you haven't even got enough for a down payment. Well, that's a detail that's a little bit rough, but once I get going... Mm -hmm. Well, you better get going right now. Can't you make this horse go any faster? Abigail, if you know how to only free speed, slow, dead slow, and stop. <laughs> Who were those two men you were yelling at back in town? Men? Those insect-went men, three booters, scallywags. They had the impudence to try to bribe me. They offered me money. Money? For what? Making speeches. Making speeches? Well, that's practically stealing it for you, Beauregard. When do you stop? I don't. You mean you you turned it down? I'd rather you say I gave it up. The Claghorn doesn't sell his honesty and integrity for money. They sold nearly everything else. Well, I, re I say I refuse to aid that sniveling hypocrite, Senator Lee. I can't say I blame you for that. But that's just like you, Beauregard. You finally get a chance to make some money, and it has to be one you can't accept. I know. Did our allowance arrive here? In the mail. I hope so. All we got to our names is the monthly allowance from that, that weed patch. Weed patch? You call the Claghorn men better weed patch? The land that supplied the entire South with the most succulent mint that was ever squeezed into a julep? Oh, God. Yeah. said something. Of all the contemptible things to say after I've been such a good wife. Oh, now, Mom, pardon Now, you me just stay out of about... this. You just stay out of it. I can't. Not when I see you two this way, arguing all the time. Well, then why don't you both do what I want once in a while? Once in a while? Oh, but, Ma, we always give in to you. Then why doesn't your father do something useful? Oh, Mama, I'm sure that if you'd only show Papa a, a little more sympathy, that it'd give him new incentive. Oh, ridiculous. If I didn't drive your father to do things, he wouldn't do anything. Oh, sure, it's easy to put all the blame on me, but look at us. Mama, if you'd only try speaking nicely to Dad, I'm sure that... No, oh, very well, I'll, I'll try it. 
Oh, Beauregard. Beauregard? Beauregard. Oh, Beauregard! Oh, that man. That man. Calling me, my dear? Calling you? I shouted until I was blue in the face. My dear, you look very well in blue. Oh, stop wasting time and help Mary Lou. Dear me, the daughters can't be here already. I'll go. I'll see who it is. I'll go. Come on in. Morning, Mr. Peterson. Morning, Mr. Cleghorn. Got a special delivery letter for you. Special delivery, huh? Now, who'd be sending me your special delivery letter? Your Aunt Agatha? No. Maybe that nephew of yours in the army? Uh-uh. How about that Uncle Charlie of yours? We no longer correspond, sir. Not since he married a girl named Lincoln. Why, that girl's from Atlanta. A girl named Lincoln has no right to be from Atlanta. Well, there's only one way to find out whom this letter's from. But check. Mm -hmm. Well, if this don't beat all get out, they certainly have got their nerve. Probably didn't even talk to you about it in the first place. Yeah. Mr. Claghorn, I wouldn't stand for it if I were you. You wouldn't? No, sir. You've got to stand on your rights. Mr. Peterson, you're right. A man has got to stand on his rights. That's his spirit. Well, so long, Mr. Claghorn. So long, Mr. Peterson. Uh, well, guess I'm getting a little absent-minded. <laughs> yeah, absent-minded, that is. Anyhow, Mr. Claghorn, I want you to know that you get the most interesting mail on my whole route. Well, that's mighty nice of you to say so, sir. Morning, Mr. Uh, 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 Claghorn's the name. Claghorn, sir. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Peterson. Morning. Rowdy Dow. Magnolia! Mary Lou! Look here! Well, Rich! Rich, look! $1,500! $1,500? Where in the world did you have? Well, the lawyers made a deal for the mint beds with a Kentucky distillery. Whiskey, you understand? They're gonna put up bottled mint juleps with Claghorn's mint. Why, that's wonderful, <laughs> Daddy. Beauregard, I can almost kiss you for that. Well, thank you, my dear. It's nice of you to almost want to kiss me. Well, why don't you kiss him, Mama? Hmm? Magnolia, my blossom, prepare to defend yourself. Stop it now, but stop it. But Magnolia. Let me up here, but boy, Why, just God. one kid. Stop it, this very... One little kid. What on earth has come over you? <laughs> stop it. Stop Magnolia. it, Bo. Let me up. Stop it. What this is it, Beauregard. Just one little kiss. Well, what on earth has come over you? When you blush that way, you're as pretty as the day I married oh, you. stop it. Oh, oh, oh Beauregard. <laughs> stop it. Oh, Magnolia, there's nobody here to see us. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, Beauregard. Yeah. Watch out for my sacroiliac. All right, all right. Stop it, Beauregard. Let me stop it. Just one instant. kiss, one little kiss. You're wrinkling my animal cast. <laughs> oh, my dear. <laughs> I hadn't even noticed it. <clears throat> <clears throat> Magnolia, have you a cold? I didn't call. You didn't? Well, I thought... You didn't? Oh, oh! Oh, that's oh hello. Oh, yeah. I was uh, showing Magnolia a new wrestling hole. Very interesting, I'm sure. Oh, well, uh, ladies, after all, Mr. Claghorn and I are married. Yeah, legally, that is. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Claghorn, dear, perhaps you'd better leave us alone. Yes, my dear. Uh, excuse me. Uh, the, the, the things for the punch are on the kitchen table. Yeah, the punch are on my... Uh, the kitchen has on... Excuse me, on the table. <laughs> yes, just... just Come right on in, please. We'll serve refreshments immediately. Wealthy man, fifteen hundred dollars in my pocket. What am I? A shoulder jerk. Jerk, that is. Come in. Oh, come in, William. Ah, what can I do for you? I'm collecting for the evening paper. Oh yeah. How much is it? A dollar fifteen. Yeah. 
Oh, you don't happen to have change for fifteen hundred, do you? Fifteen hundred dollars? Gee, if Jeff had that, he could go right into business. Uh, how do you happen to know so much about Jeff? Oh, he's my pal. He tells me everything. All he's waiting for is the money. Yeah? What business is he going into? I heard him tell my papa he wanted to buy a truck. Truck? What's he want with a truck? To carry the bodies around in. Bodies? Sure, first he dresses them, then he puts them in the truck. That way they keep frozen stiff. Stiffs? I declare. So Jeff's going to become an undertaker. What's undertaker? Now, you have plenty of time to find out about that. My, oh, my, wait till Magnolia finds out Jeff wants to be an undertaker. Hey, what you make, a punch? Oh, yeah, grape juice and lemonade. It's for the ladies. Can I help you, Mr. Claghorn? Well, thank you, William. Yeah, there's some grape juice in the cupboard there, if you'll get it, please. Sure, I'm a good grape juice getter. Let's see grape juice. If I knew how to read, that might help. Maybe this is it. I got it, Mr. Claghorn. All right, in. Okay. Well, we're getting the shape up. this grape juice. <laughs> we haven't got enough yet, William. You better get some more grape juice over there. We've got to fill up this other bowl. Okay. Pour it in? Yeah, pour it in the bowl, William. grape juice out of these days. Should I fill up the other boat, too? Yes, thank you, William. Now, ladies, it has been decided that women should take more interest in the affairs of state. We've left almost everything to the men, and look what a mess they made of the world. <laughs> we have several important issues to discuss. Well, first, let's have the punch, Annabelle. It's so warm today. It's the Claghorn special formula, Mrs. Dinwiddie. Most refreshing. Thank you. I are. Thank you. Good. And one for you, Jennifer. And you, Matilda. I just love punch. If people drank punch instead of that horrible whiskey, this would be a better world. Uh, it might be better, but it wouldn't be as much fun. Well, alcohol will never pass our lips. Never? No, I never let it get past me, either. God, you serve very nicely. Thank you, my dear. Precisely. You see, the man's place is in the home. Oh, that's fine, 
William, fine. You've been a big help. My mother thinks I'm a brat. She does. Sure, and she's right, too. Used up all the grape juice to want to taste it. Uh-huh. <coughs> sure is powerful grape juice. You're a fine little man. I like you. Well, then how about giving me my dollar fifteen? Friends never discuss money matters. <coughs> Put out any fires with this punch. Is it all ready for the ladies now? Yeah, but are the ladies ready for it? I'm gonna play cops and robbers. Can I borrow Daisy to make believe she's a bloodhound? Why, well, son, that dog is a bloodhound. She's a pedigreed bloodhound. No fooling? Yeah. Daisy, if you're a bloodhound, it's say a blade. That's a joke, son. Come on, Daisy. And I say that women should enter politics. Why, a woman might even get to be president, like George Washington. Well, she might get to be president, but she could never be the father of her country. <laughs> Ladies, all my life I've been a teetler, a teeter, a teeter, a teeter tattler. I've never taken a drink in my life. And that should stand for this fair state. I say we should have prohibition again. And you're so right. Every prohibition you have to be The Daughters of Dixie shall campaign to make this state as dry as it was during Prohibition. And we girls shall be a shining example because none of us ever drink. Now we shall hear from the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, Hortense. Hortense! Hortense! Carry me back to Virginia. There's where the cotton Either grape juice is getting stronger, or women are getting weaker. What's the matter with her? Her mother was the same way. She always wanted to sing. Listen, honey, that salesman won't wait much longer, either. Well, there must be some way to get that money, Jeff. Well, I wish I knew how. If I don't raise it pretty quick, they'll sell the truck to somebody else. Gosh. If I had any courage, I'd tell Mary Lou to go ahead and marry that boy. Part of her mother. The girl's got a right to marry the boy she loves, even if he does want to be an undertaker. Maybe your mother's right. Well, I couldn't even support you. Oh, now that's a fine way to talk. Well, as soon as you make a payment on the truck, then mother will see things differently. Yeah, if and when. And right now, it looks like never. Well, we mustn't give up, Jeff. <coughs> <coughs> Come over here, you two. Well, hello, Daddy. What's happened? Nothing yet, but something's going to. A claghorn always means what he says, and means what he says, or oh, and vice versa, that is. I'm going to give you $1,500 to make a down payment on that truck. $1,500? Oh, Daddy. Mr. Claghorn, it's your dowry, my dear. A fine southern custom, which your mother completely disregarded. Oh, but, Daddy, $1,500, that's just wonderful, but, oh, no. No, I'm not going to let you do it. Now, that's the money from your mint bed, isn't it? Makes no difference, my dear. But, well, Jeff, my boy, I can't say that I approve of the things you're going to carry around in your truck. Well, what's the matter with them? Everything is preserved as good as new. Good as new? The refrigeration keeps them frozen solid, stiff as a board. Well, they could stay in that truck for years. Still, well, why would anybody want them that way? Oh, but, Daddy, they thaw out in an hour. They thaw out? Then you can put them in your own icebox. Put them in my icebox? Sure, in the icebox. Oh, no. Say, is there something wrong with you, Mr. Claghorn? 
Jeff, my boy, whatever made you decide to become an undertaker? Undertaker? <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> Look, Mr. Claghorn, this is a frozen food truck. Food? Well, my boy, you put ten years back on my life. <laughs> of course, uh, you could have said you were a southern planter. <laughs> That's a joke, son. Be alert. Pay attention. Don't let them get by you. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank yeah. you, sir. I know you'll be successful. For the first time in its long history, our organization is going to nominate its own candidate for the Senate. Our political committee has given the matter of candidates thorough thought. And we have unanimously agreed that the right woman to carry our banner in the coming campaign will be Magnolia Claghorn. Our next senator. I don't know what to say. This is no time for words, Magnolia. This is the time for action. And now, about campaign funds. I declare, listen to those girls. The meeting must be breaking up. You children better run along now. You're not kidding. Oh, Daddy, the check. Oh, yes, give me the check. Oh, the check. Yes, well, here it is. Well, wait a minute, sir. You've got to endorse it. Oh, um, I heartily endorse this check. Amen. Oh, no, <laughs> Sign Daddy. it on the back, please. Here. You girls have done nobly, but we're still short of money for our campaign fund. I will personally contribute $1,500. Oh. And I'll write the check for it right now. Oh, oh I'm glad down south. We got good cotton cut up north. The cotton's oh. rotten. Look away. Look away. Look away. All right. I can take a hint. Bloodhound. <laughs> so happy about? Oh, I'm sorry, my dear. I didn't mean to be happy. Beauregard, I've got something to tell you. From now on, I'm going to wear the pants in this family. Oh, naturally, dear. I thought you were going to tell me something new. I am. The daughters of Dixie have decided to run me for state senator. Well, that's a very good thing. To... State senator? The Honorable Magnolia Claghorn. Well, Magnolia, that's quite a surprise. <laughs> that's quite a surprise. Yes, sir. That's quite a... Oh, I said that, didn't I? Yes. I've donated that $1,500 to the campaign fund. You what? Stop acting like a moron. I gave him the money that we made on the mint bed. You did? Certainly. I wrote him a personal check for it, so I hope you put that money in the bank already. Oh, yeah, I did. No, I didn't. I gave it to Mary Lou to put in the bank. Oh, good. <laughs> Truck? But we don't expect any deliveries. Oh, no. No, it can't be a truck. No, it's the thunder. Thunder? Yeah, a big storm is coming up. Storm? The rain is coming down. The rain's Wind is going the sideways. Storm. Glass Glass. all Glass. over the place. The poor fellow's bleeding. Sorry, God. Yes, dear. I'm going out and see what that is. Oh, didn't you? Didn't I? I forget What's the... What's the matter with you, anyhow? Now, you just finish up what you were doing here. I'm going out and see what that truck wants. Yes, dear. Oh, uh, Senator. I'm dead. It's just beautiful, Jeff. Those new ice compartments are nice, huh? Our whole future's in this. Yeah, as soon as we make all the payments, we're in the bag. Just what is the meaning of this? Oh, well, hello, Mom. Hi, Mom. Isn't this beautiful? You're looking at the new tycoon of the frozen food business, Mrs. Claghorn. Did you deposit the check in the bank yet? In the bank? Is that what Papa told you? Of course. Well, then that's exactly what I did. Where did Jeff get the money to buy that truck? Well, I... I... Uh, well, a uh, uh, rich uncle died. Yes, he died. He must have died rather suddenly. Well, yes, it, it, uh, it just occurred to me. Uh, to him, I mean. He, uh, he ran out of breath. And I'm running out of patience. Everybody's acting mighty strange around here. And that check had better be in the bank. The daughters of Dixie are nominating me for state senator. State senator? Oh, my mama, that's wonderful. Congratulations, Mom. Well, thank you. Uh, nobody asked you. And Mary Lou, I've drawn a check for the full $1,500. <laughs>
$1,500 to donate to my campaign fund. You have? I certainly have. I have to run along now, honey. And you, get that monstrosity off of these premises. Oh, Beauregard! Oh, yes. Beauregard! Gee, honey, this is bad. Oh, we gotta get that money back somehow. They'll never return it. The contract's already signed. Got to think of something. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, I'll see what I can do and get in touch with you later. Goodbye, beautiful. Bye. Magnolia Claghorn to run for Senate. A fine mess of horseradish you've got us into. Mrs. Claghorn. Who's Mrs. Claghorn? The only thing that could beat us right now is just this. A woman. But boss, nobody knows Mrs. Claghorn. You're in the South now, baby. And down here, a woman is more than a woman. She's an institution, a superstition. You babies want to hang on to what you've had for the last 12 years, you better start thinking and start thinking fast. What is it? There's a Mr. Jeff Davis to see you, sir. Davis? I don't know any Davis. What does he want? He says it's personal. Okay, send him in. Uh, uh, what do you want, Senator? Can I go to lunch now? I'm hungry. Stay put! No, yeah, what's on your mind, young man? I'd like to talk to Senator Lee. I handle all his business for him. My name is Healy, Big Dan Healy. Oh, I've heard of you, Mr. Healy. Will you have a cigar? Thank you, sir. Now, what's your business with the Senator? Well, I've always had a great admiration for Senator Leeds, and thank I... Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, shake hands with Mr. Um, what's your name? Jefferson Davis. Yeah, Mr. Davis. Shake hands with Mr. Davis, Senator. I can't. What do you mean you can't? Well, my hand's caught in a desk drawer. Oh. Now shake hands. Not with me, with him. Oh. I hope you get re-elected, Senator. I don't mind. Well, young fellow, now let's have it. What do you want to see me about? Well, I have a way to defeat Mrs. Claghorn. You have? Yes. Huh. Well, now, here's the way it has to be worked. Daisy, you see me at my lowest ebb. If I don't replace that money, the Claghorn name will be disgraced. You're lucky to be a dog. Your troubles are canine. Mine are asinine. If you weren't a dog, I'd get a laugh on that. Well, don't sit there with your tongue hanging out. Pray for me. Mr. Claghorn. Mr. Claghorn. Yeah. Yeah. I got good news. What is it? $3,000 worth of it. Nobody saw you take it, did they? Mr. Claghorn, would you care very much if Mrs. Claghorn were defeated in the election? Care? Sean, if Magnolia was elected, my life wouldn't be worth living. Good. Then we can keep the $3,000. Yeah, but I don't understand. Well, we had to get the money to give to your wife. So I went to Mr. Healy. Healy? Why, that low down... Well, now, wait a minute. He's the one that gave me the money. Yeah. Well, take it back was probably printed in the Philadelphia Mint. Well, I didn't Why do they that. call it Mint anyhow? Mint belongs with juleps, and juleps belong in the South. I know, I know. Well, I told Healy that he could stop Mrs. Claghorn's being elected by starting a third party and splitting the vote. Yeah, they do it all the time. So he gave me $3,000 for the campaign fund. Hmm. Who are they going to run against, Magnolia? You. Well, it's a good thing. Me! Now, take it easy, Mr. Claghorn. You've got to stand on your right sometime. Well, I know. But how am I going to stand on my rights while Magnolia's standing on my face? Well, you really think I'd make a good senator? Mm -hmm. Well, you'd make a loud one, and that's mighty important. <laughs> Why, look, Beauregard, even Daisy knows there are two sides to you. The humble and great. Why, if you just showed a little gumption, you could be a great man. You could be a leader of men. By George, you're right. 
And the first thing I do, I'll assert myself to Magnolia. I'll... Oh, regard? She heard me. You better beat it. Magnolia will never stand for two of us in the same house. Yes, dear. Yes, dear? Someone's knocking at the door. Answer it. We want to talk to you, Claghorn. Mm -hmm. But we might have to give you a little warning. Warning? Are you gentlemen trying to threaten me? Yeah, we're threatening you. What about it? Nothing. I just wanted to make sure. Be positive. Meet a lot of nice people that way. We just I... want to tell you, don't try to double-cross us in this election. Yeah. One funny trick out of you, and there'll be two candidates running. Leeds and your wife. What are you going to do to me? Eradicate, eliminate, exterminate you. Knock you off. Take your choice. They all mean the same. Well, gentlemen, that's murder. Yeah, ain't it? What if the people should elect me? In that case, you get the biggest funeral in history. Yeah. Yeah. The best thing we can do for your father is to see that he gets elected. Do you really think he has a chance? Why, well, he has more than a chance. And from now on, I'm going to do everything I can to help him. Drawing for Beauregard Claghorn. Boss Healy machine threatened by rising popularity of Claghorn. A fine mess. If we don't have trouble with one Claghorn, we're having trouble with the other. I'm sick and tired of it. Here he is, boy. What is the meaning of this, this abduction? I protest. I'm a southern gentleman and I like Shut to up. be... I think you gentlemen are a disgrace to the south, if you don't mind my saying so. We mind. Yeah, that's what I thought. Now, Shut I, up! Well, I only... Shut up! What other languages do you speak? Get off your high horse, Claghorn. You're here for a reason. Now, let me tell you something, bud. We've had more than a dozen parades in this territory for Leeds. We've had more speeches for Leeds than we ever had before. And still the people are not interested in him. Well, I haven't done anything to make people vote for me. Just the same. If you're elected, you had better start making a down payment on a cemetery plot. Us guys make a living stopping guys like you from living. What do you want me to do? Well, you've got 3,000 bucks not to be elected. It's up to you to find some way to earn that dough. Well, in the South, we settle disputes of this kind like gentlemen, by negotiating. All right, let's negotiate. With you? Why, that's impossible. I don't even know your kinfolk. I what? And besides, I think there's a trace of northern blood in you. I don't like your method, Mr. Dan Healy. Why, you phony, hot-aired south wind. Sure, I'm from the north. But I'm running things down here in the south. And the sooner you southern saps find out... So that's it, huh? You're from the north. Well, that's the last straw. Taking orders from a northerner I will not tolerate. Gentlemen, I'm ashamed of you. And I'm ashamed of myself for even talking to you. Through no fault of my own, I became involved with you. But as of this minute, I am through. Finished. I will no longer be a party to your crooked politics. From now on, I'm going to try to be elected. Boy, you cheap. Shut up! Why, you don't think you can get away with this, do you, Claghorn? I have only one answer to that, Mr. Healy. May I borrow your gloves? I have no gloves. Well, then, this will have to do. Let that be a lesson to you. I want to thank you for making a man of me. Good day, gentlemen. The biggest crowd we've ever had. You'll pick up plenty of votes tonight. Yeah, he's been a big help in the campaign. I like you, son. Son, that is. <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute, Daddy. I found him first. <laughs> well, I have two-thirds of the family on my side, at least. But get ready. Harvey's going to announce you. Oh, how do I look? 
beautiful, Daddy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the speaker of the evening and candidate for Senator, Beauregard Claghorn. <laughs> the name, Beauregard Claghorn, that is. Now, uh, Mr. Harvey here has been helping me in my campaign. He's going to assist me tonight in telling you why a vote for Claghorn is a step in the right direction. <laughs> Even if you're not going that way. <laughs> yeah. Now, before we get to the main subject, there's a few things I'd like to say first. Stick to the speech, Jeff Rule, Beauregard. Now, I'm sorry, son. I got some things on my chest. Things I can't get off my chest with bicarbonate or soda. Oh, my God. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh. Laughing's good for the soul. I want you to laugh. You know, everybody would be much better off if more heels had souls. Heels had souls! If you're listening, you should be laughing. <laughs> and if there's any Yankees in the audience, I'll wrestle them two falls out of three. <laughs> Jeff's speech for oh, oh, yeah. Now, about this election business, I'm warning you that if I'm elected, I won't allow any streetcars down here to go north. People that live up that way won't be able to get home. Oh, my God. Of course, they can always come to my place, Flaghorn Manor, and live in style and comfort. Southern comfort, that is. Listen, the audience <laughs> wants And to they'll eat southern fish, too. Yeah. Heel. That's Lee spelled backwards. <laughs> That's a joke, son. Here I am hitting the jackpot. I'm busting scenes tonight. Busting my heart. Now, Holy God, Matty, you... you want to say something, son? Did I want to say? Well, go right ahead and say it. It's a free country. At least the southern part of it is. Well, all I want to say is. Well, go right ahead and say it. Well, that's what I've been trying to Don't do. Don't ever let it be said that a clag home won't let another man talk. Well, that's very nice of you. Yeah, well, you... then get to the point. You're wasting time. Minutes, you understand. Yes. And hours but and days. How about years? Years? Don't worry about them. Only walls have years. <laughs> I wasted another one on you. I keep hitting them, you keep booting them. Are you through? Are you serious? I got some more talking here to do about the election. Yes, yes, give it a chance. Just once, please. Will somebody get this gentleman a glass of water? Mississippi water. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, up to now, Mr. Claghorn has merely been warming up his vocal cords. He's now ready to address you on the subject of why you should vote for him on election day. Mr. Clay. <laughs> Folks, ladies and gentlemen, I know a lot of people are going to want to vote for me because they're friends of mine. Well, they shouldn't do it on that basis because I'm a man just like yourself. No better or no worse. But Boss Healy and his mob, they think they're better than you are. Maybe that's why they think they can tell you what to do, make you like it, even if you don't like it. You see, Senator Lee belongs to that kind of an organization, the kind that tells us average people what to do and how to do it, chiefly because they think we haven't got the sense to do things for ourselves. Who said we haven't got sense? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't want any politician tell me how to live. <laughs> <laughs> now, please, folks, don't be angry with me because I'm telling you the truth. We're just as much to blame. We kept them in office. We voted for Senator Leeds and Paul Healy's political machine, didn't we? In fact, the way things went before, it would have been better if we'd have saved the tax money for elections and had no elections at all. Why, our votes were a joke. Votes are something I don't like to joke about. And if I know the South, I know that you all agree with me. I don't want any more of Leeds than those other crooks. <laughs> I wouldn't 
gentlemen were ignoring me. I thought I'd go out and get a little air. Yeah, we'll give you some air. I hope you won't think it too aggressive of me, gentlemen, to ask what you intend to do with me. You'll find out, bud. Sit down and stop it or up. Yeah. I get a little tired with nothing to do. I thought I might join you boys. Shut up. Yeah. Might uh, play a game of bridge. Bridge. Takes four hands to play bridge. South, west, east. Yeah, I know. And the dummy hand. N-O-R-T-H dummy. Well, you got to sit down. Yes, sir. Say, yes, sir. The sudden disappearance of Mr. Claghorn has blown the entire election campaign sky high. For the police admit their failure to unearth one single clue as to the whereabouts of the missing senatorial candidate, Beauregard Claghorn. <laughs> beginning to circulate that Claghorn, afraid of something, vanished of his own accord. Actually, not a chance. So that's it. What's it? He's running away again. He's hiding. Oh, Mama, you don't believe that. Well, what else can I believe? Certainly nobody kidnapped your father for ransom. We haven't any money. Well, maybe it's some sort of an attack to keep him out of the election. But how could that influence the voting? There won't be any voting. Not for Mr. Claghorn, at any rate. If he doesn't return by 9 o'clock the night before election, his name will be withdrawn from the ballot. Then that's exactly what he wants. Jeff Davis, where there's smoke, there's fire. And if there are any rumors, then something must have happened to start them. I still think he's running away. Oh, Mama, can't you ever give Papa the benefit of the doubt? Why, Mary Lou. Honey, you're upset. Yes, I'm upset. Rumors, huh? They were probably started by that gossipy old bunch of hens they call the daughters of Dixie. Now, see here, Mary Lou. Yeah, but look, Mama, you don't seem to care what's happened to Papa. All you care is why he disappeared. Afraid that if there is a scandal of some sort, it'll ruin your chances for election. Honey, please. Well, I'm proud of my daddy, and I don't think he did run away. And instead of sitting here wasting time, I'm going out to look for him. You coming, Jeff? You bet, baby. Well. So, you're here too, huh? Well, you might as well kill me and get it over with. Don't make so much noise. But when I die, I don't want to go west. I want to stay in the south. Flag I don't want to cross the River Jordan or the River Styx. The Mississippi is good enough for me. Well, you're good. And when I get to heaven, I'm going to see about changing the name of the North Star. Who oh, else? Make him close his kisser. He's been driving us bets with his chatter about the South. When you talk about the South, son, tip your hat. Shut up, shut up. That's enough. Why can't I go home? You can go home right now if you want to. Can I? All you have to do is withdraw from the election. Withdraw? Never! I say never! All right, suit yourself. We'll keep you locked up here till 9 o'clock tonight. That'll be two hours from now. By that time, your name will be off the ballot anyway. So that's it. Gentlemen, this crime will not go unpunished. I tell you... Boss, why don't I just knock this character off now? Don't be impatient, Ace. Everything in due time. Now, you think it over, sucker. I've got plenty of time. I'll get in touch with you boys later. Oh. Yankee. Guys, Johnny, if we don't find your father before that 9 o'clock meeting tonight, you'll be a dead duck as far as the election is concerned. Oh, but, Jeff, we've got to find him. I don't care about the election. I just want to know that he's all right. I wish the police could do something. What is it, Cliff? Want us to go to work now, Mr. Davis? No, not yet. I'll let you know. 
These cans are better cooked than my wife. Gentlemen, I've been poisoned. Now what's the matter? These are Boston baked beans. I should have been a plain pickpocket like my mother wanted. What if eight? Well, we'll have to listen to you much longer, Claiborne. Yeah, but these... Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program of dance music to bring you an important announcement. One of the candidates in the most unusual election campaigns in the history of this state is here with us in the studio. Mrs. Magnolia Claghorn. Magnolia! Ladies and gentlemen, I know my announcement will reach everyone's ears, but it is really intended for my husband, Beauregard Claghorn, if he should be listening in. I am, Magnolia, I am. I hope you are, Beauregard. What's the matter, Magnolia? I want to tell you that I have withdrawn from the election, leaving the field clear for you to defeat Senator Leeds. You can't do that. No. Nothing can stop me. My mind is made up. Why are you doing it, Magnolia? Why, that is. I love you, Beauregard. And I realize how badly I've treated you all these years, and now I want you to be senator. Well, that's wonderful, Magnolia. Hey, cut it out. We're not supposed to let you talk to anyone. No. Yeah, but I can't get out of here. They're holding me. No matter where you are, you've got to reach town hall by 9 o'clock tonight. Just let him try it. Show how brave you are, Beauregard. Overcome the vile villains who are holding you. Defy them. Magnolia is very naive. Come back to me, Beauregard. I'll do my best, Magnolia. I know you'll do your best. This can't be. It ain't natural. I'm going nuts crazy. Those men who kidnapped you must be out of their minds. Shut up. Shut up! Cut that radio off. Shut it off. Remember, 9 o'clock tonight. Guess that'll hold you. You shouldn't have done that. Magnolia won't like it. What kind of stunt are you trying to pull, Claghorn? I ought to knock you off now. Now, now don't be hasty, gentlemen. Sometimes miracles can happen. And uh, don't move, either of you, or I'll run you through. And if you try anything, this trusty Confederate blade will make you look like an olive in a martini with a toothpick in it. Well, you're going to be a wise guy. Stay where you are. Don't come another step. I'm warning you. Now I know why the South lost the war. Now, just a minute, there, fellas. We warned you, bud. Yeah, if you'd just give me time to repent my hasty temper. If you'd... Ah, oh, shut up. Hold yeah. it, Knifey. Don't cut him yet. Cut me? Would either of you gentlemen care for a drumstick? What am I saying? Ah, uh, lock him up. We better do like the boss wants. Wait till he tells us. Yeah, that's better. Let's tie him up. Uh, my pants! This is... I say, this is embarrassing. Magnolia wanted me to wear the pants in the family now. Shut up! It is now exactly 25 minutes to nine. And still Beauregard Claghorn hasn't appeared. Nice of you fellas to carry me. My feet hurt. And probably you all know of the magnanimous gesture made by Mrs. Claghorn in withdrawing from the campaign so that her husband, who has achieved immense popularity with voters, may have a clean-cut race with Senator Leeds in tomorrow's election. After this, a coffin will seem like a relief. We're working on that, too. Hey, what do you want? The least you could do is leave me a fly swatter. There's a fly on my nose. Well, it ain't there now. You got this pan hand. Say, it's dark in here. We haven't been through here yet. Okay, boys, go to work. Okay. <laughs> Be long now. So since the boss wants Claghorn knocked off. Oh, sure. He ain't gonna let him squeal to the cops. If he's anywhere within earshot, that tune will fetch him. And it always has. Come 
another plea to Mr. Craghorn, who we hope will return before 9 o'clock tonight so that his name may be kept on the ballot. Hurry, Mr. Claghorn, hurry. The time is short. The chances for your election are slipping. So are my parents. Mr. Claycomb, we got till 9 o'clock to get to town hall. Yeah. Yet can we make it? Oh, nothing like trying. All right. Daisy, come on. Oh, Daddy. It will be regrettable indeed if Mr. Claghorn doesn't appear here within the next four minutes. It is now two minutes to nine. Time is near. I see the members of the Board of Elections talking among themselves. It's almost time for them to make the announcement of the withdrawal of Beauregard Claghorn's name from tomorrow's ballot. <laughs> Only 90 seconds left now. 90 seconds. <laughs> 60 seconds left. One minute. Fifty seconds. Thirty seconds. Eight seconds. Three seconds. Well, folks, I, I guess it's too late. The officials are coming up to the microphones now. It's it. Uh, it's, I say it's Beauregard Claghorn. So your wife would withdraw from the election. <laughs> oh, no. What? Well, no, Magnolia. No, no, wait. No, 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 no. Just, just a minute, folks. Just a minute. Something's happened. Daghorn's running away again. Here we are in Southern Bell the day after the election, where a huge victory parade for Beauregard Claghorn is lining up in the boulevard directly in front of me, even though Mr. Claghorn himself is not present. Or even as you are listening to me, the police are again conducting an intense search for the new senator, who disappears at the strangest time. Children, children, where can he possibly be? Well, at least we know they haven't got him. Well, I see the band is lining up, and the parade is about to begin. And in the absence of her husband, Mrs. Claghorn is riding in the official car. <laughs> Melody. Melody? That's the national anthem. 